welcome. We're going to do an oil painting today. For the materials, please see the description below. I will begin with a rather la large uh, brush. It's an angle brush and it's two inches or 5.08 centimeters. And I'm going to start by establishing some dark. So I'm gonna take my uh, permanent alizarin crimson and this time I'm gonna use the, uh, the blue. You can mix it with the uh, phthalo cyanin green or if you have, the alternative is viridian green and you will get a purple. This brush had already a little bit of my solvent, which in my case is water because I use water soluble oils. And I'm gonna make the right hand side of, of this uh, painting uh, with a dark shadow. One of the nice things about uh, painting is that our eyes are really driven to contrast. So in order to show the bright summer images that I'm drawing right now or painting, uh, the dark is what helps you establish them. So I'm gonna just start using a little bit more of the paint and I am not now using any more solvent or water. And so with a very nice and light touch, I should say. Um, I'm just, uh, as you can see, it's not uh, thorough mixing. You have to uh, learn your own touch, how you wanna mix your paints. I have seen some YouTube channel um, tutors that uh, recommend you not to really mix that much. So there's a little bit of a bang, but I don't want to be too specific describing things. The reflections on the water, which are going to be down here, reflections on water usually are darker than what they are reflecting. I hope you can see that there's blue and red. Some of them are not mixed. Other areas are mixed. And that's a very nice visual effect that you may want to achieve. So if you want to do that as I do, just make sure that you don't completely mix when you're using your, your brush. So there's gonna be a, a bridge here and this bridge has a little bit of a curve, uh, not too much, but a little bit of a curve. I mean, we can, we can make this bridge our bridge, make it yours and paint uh, the way that you like it. And then under the bridge around this area here, so you can see it's like half of the canvas is in the dark and we're going to have an other area of dark. Now, our eyes are driven to lights and also in terms of temperature to warmer temperatures. And what I have seen explained in some of the YouTube channels that tell you about composition is that because we are driven to light and because we're driven to warm, those are the elements that you can have in less proportion. In other words, more proportion of the dark and the cool. The blue is the coolest color in the color wheel. So as we go far, this is going to be like a like a bank and it goes as we go farther there's also more atmosphere between us and what we are painting and because of that the things get lighter and bluer so we have now here is going to be like a like a reflection of that bridge and uh, in some cases I like to keep the the very nice watery uh, sort of sensation of of the water that's the sort of wavy or going down. In other cases, we're gonna be reestablishing some dark because as we paint, this is very transparent and it's not really gonna look that dark. So we need to establish a little bit darker here. You will see how we build it up. Now, right about here, there's gonna be a Canadian goose. And this is something that I, I saw this. Um, two days ago walking in the park and uh, I, th I thought it was a very neat uh, image it's a well you'll see the image will start developing and like I usually say you have the advantage over me that you can see the final painting by just scrolling to the back so 
with a dry brush, which is, it's a Mimic Hog, as you can see here, Mimic Hog from Creative Mark. I use this basically to clean the canvas where I'm going to have lights in in the areas where I have put some dark so there's another area of light right about there so if you're painting with me just see sort of where I've been putting these these things and then there's another small area I don't want to attract too much attention to the edges so the attention should be really coming around here but some of these uh, trees like I said, you can go to the end and see the final image. We're getting a little bit of light. And in here, there's a kayak. It's funny because I wanted to take the picture with, uh, with him in the kayak and he all of a sudden he stopped and he's looking at me because he thought I just wanted to take the picture. So he was waiting for me to take the photo. So I told him, no, no, I want you in the picture. He just laughed. So then he started paddling again. Um, I just thought it was an interesting uh, image to have him over there. So I think he, in my painting, I think I went too high with this bridge because if we put his head right against where the dark area of the bridge is, then we won't be able to see him. But if we contrast, his image against the dark, darker area of the shadow, then we can see his, uh, his profile right there. Okay, so that's gonna be him with a little cap, baseball cap, and then he was, he was sort of piling away. So we'll have him and his reflection in there. And this was a little Canadian, I think I did mention that, Canadian goose. There were a bunch of them, but in the picture, I only got one. I think there's three tiny ones over there, but um, I don't want to get the tiny ones because it's going to be a bit confusing. All right, so we have the darker elements already in the, in the picture. So I'm just going to off camera brush uh, that brush. I just washed it. I used water soluble oils, as you can see in the description below, and uh, I like to make sure that I clean my brushes all the time. I am going to begin with a size 12 of the Simply Simmons. This is a bright. The Simply Simmons brand is a synthetic brand. They're really very good for water soluble materials like acrylics or oils. I always recommend them because you can see how nice chiseled edge. I've had this for a long time. I've painted a lot of paintings. When I use the hog or the, uh, the bristles that are hog, because these are water soluble paints, eventually they open up and they don't keep the nice chiseled edge. So hog is very good for oil based oils because you don't have to wash them with water. But if you have to wash with water, my recommendation, if you want to keep your brushes available to have the nice chiseled edge, then my recommendation is go for the synthetics. All right, with that explanation, let's get painting. So we're going to establish first a bit of the darks in oil paints, and I'm using the Losine in green, which is a very powerful, has a very powerful tinting, and alizarin crimson, and they're not completely mixed in the brush. So as you can see, it's just a, and I use a light touch now to establish some more darks here. I don't want to lose all the effects that I got with the dripper, dripping of, of this area. So in some areas it's looking reddish, more reddish with the alizarin crimson, and in some areas it looks more green, which is what I want. I don't want to have all one color, or let's say all, all of one particular shade. They should, however, read the same tone so they should be dark both of them i'm getting a little bit more and as i mentioned um, if if you see in the bottom there's several tutors in youtube that i highly recommend i don't it's taken me a long time to find tutors that 
I like because I like to watch the whole process. Now, some people just like to see um, final paintings or edited paintings because uh, people might get a bit bored watching the whole thing. I like to watch the whole thing because that's, I learned even how to hold the brush. So I'm holding the brush really loose. That's why I like the long handles. Um, at this point, I avoid doing this. That's only if I ever have to do any small, um, any, any small kind of details. What I'm doing now, it's just parallel to the canvas. And this is one thing that Kelly Folsom explains. If you don't do it this way, and it's, it's a very light touch with a lot of paint on top, because otherwise I will be lifting some of the paint that I established in the bottom. Okay, so for, for these brighter areas, having dark around, it's going to be extremely helpful. And also, it's, it was, it's a summer day, kind of really um, hot, and uh, it was hot and humid, and I'm gonna add now the three darks that I have. The green, thalocyanin green, permanent alizarin crimson, and French ultramarine blue, to get a little bit of a darker here. And this is going to be against the, the light that's coming behind. These are some very overgrown trees. And then we have the reflections in the water. And that's gonna have light areas. Not all of it is light though. And just by the side it's really dark and then the reflection sh sort of uh, mimics a little bit the shape so just go sometimes is to me sometimes it was difficult to realize uh, how i should go it is looking a bit too green for my liking so i'm just going to use the blue and the red on top of the same area where I was mixing. And I'm just going to just softly go and bring this down for these reflections in the water. And after we establish these darks, we're going to start introducing some of the other colors. Okay, so this is really quite dark. I don't, I don't want to completely lose that transparent. And I'm sorry, it's moving a, a lot. I hope that you can see okay, and it's not too um, glaring. I'm just a little bit using a little bit of water as my solvent because I am using water soluble paints. And I'm adding a bit more of the red because this is becoming too blue. And yeah. So I think this is gonna be a bit better. So it's just establishing this dark. I might need to come back a little bit more, establishing it here. And even though it seems like what I was sort of doing before, it's getting rid of it. It's not, we're painting in layers like we normally uh, do for oil paints. Okay, so one important thing that I want to do for this painting is to um, establish a little bit of these uh, reflections of the water and sometimes when I do this it's very helpful because we're gonna be doing a la prima and you will see how I paint these uh, waves on the water oh I'm sorry I just banged on the camera Sorry about that. Okay, so to paint those waves in the water, um, we are going to 
use the fact that we're, you, you, we're doing a la prima painting. So, so far this should be looking pretty dark, but it's not like using a, a house brush and doing everything on the same. There's areas here that are, are a bit more red and some areas are a bit more green. And here there's definitely blues and reds. When we come back with other layers, you will see what I mean by saying it will show that they're different. So in here, I don't want to really go too much over that nice transparency. However, it's important to establish a little bit more of this dark. And definitely uh, he was darker in the, in the back. He was darker and his reflection was darker. Okay, he had one arm was uh, sort of up with the paddle. Paddle came probably all the way here. All right, and the other end of the paddle was kind of lost in here. So that's that's him. I hope that you can see it's sort of a an interesting image of a potential human being in there. Okay, all right. So now what we are going to start doing is start painting the color of the water. I'm going to continue using the same brush. I hope I'm going to not regret that. For the color of the water, I am going to make a mix with blue, white, and a little bit of this greenish color. As you can see, uh, I, these two are mid-tone. I use a mid-tone gray palette and that helps me establish. This is not going to be very light, although it's going to look light here, but these are going to help me for this area. And what I am doing in the bottom here is just mixing a bit more of the other colors to get different varieties and this is definitely lighter because I used a bit more of the white in there. So I'm going to make more mix of these colors. Oh gosh, yeah, I don't know how that happened. Oh my, sorry about that, it's just um, my easel decided to take a break. I don't know why. It just, it's an old easel. Sorry about that. I hope I, yes, I think I did <laughs> put it back to where it should be. All right, okay. Well, the hassles of, uh, of uh, filming, because this happens when I'm painting, it doesn't matter. All right, so let's let's just get started having a little bit of fun, putting a bit of this uh, water here and changing to the green, to the blue. And this was the brush that already had the darker colors. So we're gonna have fun with this. I believe it's a bit too dark but it's okay because uh, I like to paint uh, darker, even, even if I don't see it darker close to me, I like to paint darker um, water close to me. And then if you see, I'm not really mixing too much and now I'm gonna just add some wavy movements here um, with you know the white that hasn't been completely mixed in there especially by this by the area where we're going to have some of these dark colors it's nice to have these wavy things and i'm mixing now i don't really know what's going to come out but it doesn't really matter because uh, as you can see it's a it's a light touch and if i have the same color it doesn't give the same impression of, of that, you know, water, wavy water in there. I think this darker 
reflection is from a tree that we are not going to paint. So if you are following with me, if you're painting with me and you feel uncomfortable because you don't see, uh, you don't make sense of what I'm painting, uh, you, can, you can just leave these uh, as all uh, the same sort of wavy blue color of this. This is a canal, but right where he's turning around, he's going to meet the Boston Harbor. And uh, this canal is water that's uh, diverted from the Boston Harbor in this very nice park, okay? There's a bright area there, as you can see, just uh, going down. I'm still using the big brush. I'm, I used like plain white, it doesn't really matter because it's mixing and of course my, my brush has all of these other colors. I mean, it has from the dark because I didn't even wipe it from the dark to, to these other colors. And here, as I, as I said, I mean, this is kind of a reflection of some faraway tree. So now I'm going really uh, gently, sort of um, vertical to make that darker area a bit less dark. I don't know if that's going to work well, but um, good thing about oil painting is that you can always change. So the water gets lighter as it goes towards the horizon. Um, generally things towards the horizon get lighter, but also closer to us, there's a bit more contrast. So you can see how here there's, I try to put some waves with a little bit more contrast of the lights and, and darks. Whereas here, uh, uh, as I go up in the canvas, which is going farther, the waves are less notable and they are less contrast. All right, so here, uh, by the shadow of his, of the kayak, because that shadow is really dark, it's really nice to have some areas of light. Painting a la prima, if you are painting with me, you realize that you are, you may be picking up some of the color that I had put, that you've been putting before. That's a bit too dark for my liking. Also, if you want to use a smaller brush, feel free. I do like to have these very large brushes use as large brush as possible that's what i like and what i'm doing here is just painting the reflection of the water if you can see i'm doing it vertical but it's vertical on in the sense of using my brush vertical but i'm going horizontal so when you paint water try to make sure that your head is not tilted sometimes i do that and my water runs up. <laughs> so you don't want your water running up. Water should not do that. <laughs> and I'm just painting here some sky holes. So these are truly not sky holes. These would be water holes because what you're seeing is behind those trees, those dark trees, you are seeing the water. And you just have to be cautious of not painting over the reflection that we had there for the bridge. All right, we're moving along well. I'm just sorry about that accident with the, I hope that, yeah, you are getting it. You're getting a bit of a glare. And I think if I move my umbrella, it might be better, let me just fix it. A little bit because I paint with natural light and it's very bright today so just going around his his head I could be using a smaller brush but like I said sometimes I am stubborn okay so I just want to continue using this 
mix in here for this water, although it will require more white. I am technically grabbing the white, but it's not really white, white because it's mixing with the blue. And in the back, you have less, less waves. You can see them better in the front, but in the back, you don't see them really that that much or that well. Okay. And we're going to paint some reflections in there, but they should be really very light. In this painting, I think that what I wanted to use and show you how I do it is the advantage of using same tone but different in the color wheel. So blue in the color wheel is the coolest color. Okay, I'm just here going to explain to you, I'm doing like his head with this big brush by doing negative painting and the paddle. Again, doing some negative painting here and some negative painting on this. And we can refine his head just a little bit. I think I got rid of his baseball cap, which we can try doing. Okay, or not. It, you know, it's, it, what I want is to give the impression of, of him paddling along. And I like this transparency. I hope you can see it. I like that transparency of that reflection and I don't want to completely cover it. So I have to be careful about where I put this blue so that it shows, you know, wavy and where do I keep his reflection, which I should have kept a little bit dark in there. And you can see with a regular knife, you can get rid of the opaque. Painting opaque over transparent is the normal way. If you paint a transparent dark on top of an opaque, it works. Singer Sargent is a very good example of how he used this technique. However, if you want to get more of a light feeling, uh, lighter, um, the colors of bright sunlit images, etc., like the Impressionists, then you, you don't want to get rid of your opaque colors that are transparent. I'm sorry, your transparent colors that are dark. That is a little bit of a trick from the Impressionists. And, you know, I believe that there are many other schools that, that use it. So I'm just very, very light touch sort of going around so that we don't get a weird area and sometimes if you have areas of canvas that are not completely covered I don't mind about that it's just a style I find this a bit too on your face so I'm just lightly touch and doing that so we are okay for that I think we need to just establish a, a bit of nondescript back in here which is probably too dark so we are going to get it lighter but that's going to be now the next step so for the blue that's fine let's move on to the yellows so i'm going to put this brush on the side and i'm going to start using now a much smaller brush than what i normally use which is a size six this time um, but it's still a large brush for what we are painting. If you have seen other videos in my channel, you, you probably already know that I don't like using very large brushes. So what I did was to use a little bit of the color of the light water 
to create a sort of a, an orangey or yellowish color. This has to be washed off in sunlight for this area. If you see, this is almost the same tone or the same as the um, as my palette, which is a mid-tone gray. So this is way too dark for the area I want to paint that is in sunlight. So I need to grab more, more white. The uh, artisan brand of of the water soluble, and there's a little bit in there because I'm using reusing my colors. There's a little bit of cadmium red. I like that, so I'm gonna just get that for another area. The Windsor Newton White doesn't have a very strong tinting, so you might need to grab more than what you expect. And this is exactly what I want. I don't want to have this to establish. This was like a like a wall here in the back. It's it's a stone wall. It does have several levels, but I don't know that I want to go into that description in here. And a little bit darker for the reflection in the water. And what I wanted to show you if it works is how adding things that are tonally related. So this blue and this yellow are almost the same tone, if not the same. And by having the cooler blue by the side of the warmer yellow, we are getting the idea of a change in, I mean, they are far away because they have a lot of white, but we get the idea that they are, one of them is a warmer reflection and reflections are going down. And the other one is the the water that gets in. I think that does look okay, but a bit weird. So to make to make the uh, the areas of shaded in between, I want to use a little bit of a. This is too dry now of um, purple, but not too strong. So I am going to use that red and perhaps just bring it here. It's a bit bluer than I wanted. And that is probably the tonal value of that purple I made is probably a bit darker so that my work, yeah, it works fine for the, the bottom here. And then there's a there's an area of the stone bridge in here that goes like that. So without getting to be too, too descriptive in there, I don't think I like that. So what I'm going to do is now create slightly more pinkish color and I am using this area of the palette to relate one to the other. And just like that, sort of establish some, sort of what could look like a structure. I mean, stone is never the same. And a little bit in here. So it's good to have modeled colors not all mixed. And I think for the back end, it's probably okay, except I think this is too big. Um, and you know, the bottom end where, where things meet the water, they look very dark, even, even in, in the plein air. You know, when I was there, um, I did some sketching and looks dark but let's learn from artists like the impressionists that told us don't, don't do it that dark so it pushes it farther back if it is lighter all right 
so what do we have left so we have left here something that's nondescript uh, it really is like the back of some buildings it's it's an industrial area but I don't want to put I don't want to be like uh, Turner was great for describing industrial changes in his time but I'm not so uh, just put something in there that looks like there is something <laughs> I don't know what it is but that's it and, and as you can see these are all sort of the same tone but you've got there the blues oranges I did mix a little bit of the cadmium but because they're all lighter I think that gives a, a good impression okay I'm not changing the brush what I'm going to be doing is maybe consolidating some areas in the in the vertical palette here I just I'm afraid of <laughs> bumping my easel too much okay that's that's a good um, tone that's like a do you see it's almost getting lost so it's kind of a, a mid-tone and I just wanted to do something in here it it's interesting because this looks green well I don't know if it looks green in your image but it does look a bit green in here it's it's sort of the bridge and definitely for the top of the bridge which is getting a lot of light I don't want to use it you know necessarily just complete white and as you see I don't do like a straight line I just put it's touch and go this is a uh, wet over wet if you're painting with acrylics you might get away with painting a straight line because I just saw a mistake because uh, it's obviously dry but when you're painting with oils uh, wet and wet then if you do a straight line it's not gonna work all right let me just use this white just bring it down it's a, it's a dirty dirty white and I just don't want to lose this kind of far away sense of the light and it was really coming from this end so I'm just applying a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just like I mentioned uh, from Kelly Folsom she explains you know it's like really a, a, a light touch just make sure you know where you want to do it and I want to do it by the side of the areas where are going to be darker so when you add this light touch by the dark areas there's a contrast and our eyes are getting driven to those contrasts so uh, I hope we can eventually see this guy uh, a little bit more precise I made a mistake I made a sky hole here and it should be really the bridge so let's tackle the bridge um, in a previous video that I taped uh, I was painting bridges in this park are basically all very very similar and my sister suggested to make them redder than they look they are actually kind of greener but I think that with the greenery because we're gonna put a little bit more green in here with the greenery the red makes a good contrast so I'm going to be daring and using this sort of cadmium red on top of the on top of this purple that we put in there and it's just some touches and maybe a lizard and crimson I think this became a bit a bit too light yeah I like that I did like the idea I mean well, you could think that it, it could be a brick right no reason why a bridge could not be red instead of the greenish metallic colors that we're used to 
and you know I'm not trying to paint any specific place although it is a specific place but uh, it's not a description of the place it's a description of the moment that I captured with my camera so I, I do like that all right um, now I did eat a little bit into the back but that's okay for the first time during this uh, video I am going to wipe the brush it's just wiping it not necessarily cleaning it completely I realize that this should be taller because of the perspective so this is closer to us and as it goes farther it gets smaller right all right I, I like that okay so now let's just uh, I'm gonna go back to the brush that I had before the larger brush with the with the blue because what I want to do now is get do I want to use the same brush I probably I need to think about this just a little bit because I don't want to make this video too long um, I just want to establish some greens in there so no my answer to myself is no I am going to wipe this brush again I don't need to get completely rid of the white and I'm going to use a little bit of the only green I have in my palette to create other greens and let's do it right here as you can see the Los Cyan in green has a strong tinting power with the yellow ochre it just makes a nice olive color and of course I'm mixing it on top of the ultramarine blue if I want to knock that down a bit I can use the alizarin crimson because I want to get a little bit of a darker green but it's going to look I'm warning you it's going to look really light because this is just to set some areas in here that were catching a little bit of light not too much but you can see because we're painting on top of this area which is very dark it looks light because everything is relative to where we put it and then there was like an area here sometimes to to make sure that I don't go into too much detail I like to sort of blur my eyes and this is a recommendation from many uh, different painters I'm just grabbing everything I had in there and just flicking it here so what I was saying is sometimes just blur your vision a little bit and see where are you seeing the lights and just flick it you don't need to do too much more than that the brush stroke becomes your sort of your signature so get your own feeling how you want to do your own brush strokes and of course this reflection has a little bit of that color but darker so it is mixing with the back color so this came a bit strange because I left a very large area for the lights so what we can do is either make it a little bit lighter on top some bright areas or what I could do is put push in some dark areas and this starts looking more like the large trees that we have around the canal and what am I gonna do there so I can use the brush that I had for the light color and maybe just get a few areas where this light seems to be hitting a bit more 
You don't need too much, as I mentioned at the beginning. I think I did mention this at the beginning of the of this painting, is that our eyes are really driven more to the warmer and lighter areas rather than the dark and cooler. So just a few flicks of lighter color catch a lot of attention. I actually think it's probably too much um, for my liking. You, again, uh, this is, if you're painting with me, you can do your own painting. I use now Thalocyanin Green and Alizarin Crimson on the same brush. So it's not as dark as the original dark color, but I'm just going to establish some darks in here that are going to help those areas of light, but I think it was too, too many. Maybe the ones in the, in the very front are okay. All right, so now um, we have the, the reflection in here, and the reflection goes down, but the water movements go this way, so it's, it's good to include your movements of water when you have some sort of a, a color that you want to reflect also on the water. Let's do the little duck that was here. This is too large for the duck. So what color are we going to use? The, the, well, these are, these are Canadian, it's Canadian geese, I don't, or maybe they're ducks, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's a bird, that, that I know. So it's probably too large for this little bird. So I need to get more of the really dark color. And there were two areas, bright areas, one in the back and one in his, in the front. Yeah, I think that's gonna be okay. And then the neck and the head are really dark. Yeah, uh, really dark. I, this is the canvas, I haven't painted that, so. Now, what we need to do is, um, probably you're gonna be shocked. Uh, it's a tiny one, size two, I barely use them. But I don't wanna mess up with this impression. So I'm just gonna touch it very gently on it's not really white white because this guy has a little bit of a white on his uh, beak and his cheeks and then a little bit more bright in these areas which probably I did the wrong thing it sh I should have flicked it this way and then we're just going to sort of go down with this reflection and this reflection. That's a duck. I think that's okay. Maybe the cheek has to be softened a little bit. Yep, that's the duck or the goose. Uh, I don't even know. I'll, I'll have to ask my niece. She lives in Canada. And she is a wonderful mother. Uh, she's also a painter, although it's been a long time since she painted. I keep telling her she needs to paint. And now let's tackle the guy. Tackle the guy. Okay, the guy is really all in the dark. His paddle goes in this direction. Using the same size two. And of course, goes in here on the other end, and then it gets into the water in there. <clears throat> His um, back, I think he had like a blue top. So let's not make it that dark, <clears throat> even though <clears throat> he's really in, in the shadow, but yeah, let's make it that way and then his hand was coming over there. All right, I think you can see that's a guy. 
And one thing I liked his kayak was bright red. Yes. I I think that that red really looks uh, interesting and it's nice. It's nice. I like it. Okay. I think I think that's it. I think um maybe this is a bit a bit dark but I can see that it was getting a hint of of a light actually not not in this image when he was a bit um, farther from the bridge I caught him and the paddle had like a golden gleam and I like that so we can do that and just insinuate a bit of that. I don't think this looks like a gleaming area. <clears throat> I just need to make sure that I put it in the right place according to where this paddle would be. And of course I moved too much. So just, well, water moves and the reflections move with water i think this looks weird though uh, what i'm gonna do is just use the ochre yellow ochre um just a little bit and i'm holding my some people use the mall stick but i'm just holding on to the edge of the canvas in there Oh, that looks weird. And I think this paddle became a bit too wide. So with the blue color, and it's the lighter blue. So as you can see, now my colors are not pure, but the, I think that's gonna work okay. Just with the blue, I'm just gonna do some negative painting, which is just depositing the lighter blue in here so that this paddle has a narrower stick. Paddles were big and was kind of close to his head. Okay, and now that is kind of dark. If we're gonna have a reflection, we should make, let's see if that works. So let's say that it was catching light in, in that area and yeah, why not? It's the beauty of painting. You can change the world with painting. You saw what I did, I erased just by mixing it. And now I want to just place this more or less where it should go. All right, I think uh, this is done. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you like and subscribe to my channel and watch other paintings. Thank you very much and have a very good day.